This video is an introduction to the jinn, the jinn being the devils and spirits within Islam and Arabic folklore, and the only category of creature that rivals man in importance in Islam. Jinn, ethnologically, that is say their word origin, derives from the root jim and noon, a Semitic consonantal root that has to do with being hidden. And the jinn are thus hidden creatures, and can thus be considered almost any mythological creature in its broadest form. Kind of like how the word troll in Nordic languages can be associated with any magical creature. What makes the jinn different from, for example, the angels in Islam is that they have free will. And, like humans, they will be held to account at the end of the day of judgment for being either believers or unbelievers and God will thus send them either to heaven or hell due to this. And in the Quran it is stated And the jinn be created from the fire of Semum. Semum being a kind of scorching seasonal wind that often causes fires such as forest fires and is said to be poisonous and carry disease in its wake. The jinn are thus created from the fires of the Samoon, the fires that are caused by this wind. Though certain traditions do mention other types of matter that was used in the creation of various types of jinn, such as ice, water, earth, light and a lot of other stuff. But generally it is that they are created from fire. And Iblis, the devil in Islam, is widely considered to be a genie in most traditions of Islamic thought, and also considered to be the king of the jinns, or at the very least, the highest among them. And as the jinn are associated with the devil, it is also seen as being very bad in certain traditions of Islam to have relationships with them. And this is for example why in Saudi Arabia it is considered witchcraft and thus punishable by death in the law to have dealings with jinn. Though jinn shouldn't always be equated with devils in Islam or in Arabic folklore, as they are not always evil and can actually be both good and evil as they have free will. And you have certain Islamic traditions that actually deal with good jinn and various rules associated with them. There are also a lot of types of jinn that exist in Islam and in the greater Arabic folklore, such as the Ifrit, Marid, the Hin, and a lot of other sorts of jinn. In fact, you can argue that a lot of creatures mentioned in Islam but are not mentioned as angels are in fact a type of jinn. So the Burak and Gug and Magug, for example, are mentioned as creatures with just names, but as they are not mentioned as angels, can also in certain traditions be interpreted as being from among the jinn. And there are even more variants and special types of jinn in the folklore. Certain names for jinn are names for functions of a jinn, rather than for a certain type of jinn. For example, al ghul isn't a type of jinn, but rather a genie that is out to kill. The term ghul, or ghul as it has become in western traditions, is not a type of jinn, but an intention ascribed to a jinn. And a marid, which is another name for a jinn, isn't also a type of jinn, but a jinn that is rebellious and thus associated with being a devil or being evil. And sometimes you use the word shaitan or shayatin for evil jinn, that's say satan or satans. And the jinn in folklore can be both helpful and evil, though they are mostly the later, that's say evil, as they are associated with poison and disease due to the Samum wind being associated with it and you know their creation coming from the fires of Samum. The word Samum literally actually comes from the same root as poison and the wind is associated with disease. Also you have the name of a certain type of jinn, Sela, which is a type of female jinn and the name is also derived from a root with the meaning of coffee. <coughs> So you have that disease association too. And the jinn are also associated with insanity. As junoon, insanity, also means possession. And majnoon, one that has been possessed. And this crazy and insane comes from the same root as jinn. And uh, possession and insanity was in the past considered the same thing. So when you are insane in Arabic traditions, 
you had been possessed by jinn. But one of the traditions that most of you might be familiar with in the western world is wish granting genies, such as seen in the stories of Allah Odin, Aladdin. And the reason for genies being in rings and in bottles and lamps and granting wishes to humans that have these is due to legends regarding Solomon or Suleiman in Arabic having captured the jinn in rings and lamps and thus forced them to serve as man. And this legend also goes further back to Iblis being commanded to bow to Ada in the Quran, his entire rebellion against God being that he refused to bow to Adam, who represents humanity as he represented the jinn, as God had intended the jinn to be beneath humanity in stature despite their greater power. And Suleiman, having captured a lot of rebellious jinn, forced them into this rule that God intended by capturing them in rings and lamps to carry out the wishes of mankind. And the jinn are powerful creatures in both Islamic traditions and in Arabic folklore and can do various types of magic. But one of their most famous types of magic is that they usually take the shape of various animals, such as wolves, desert foxes, rats, scorpions, hyenas, bats, and especially snakes and owls. And there are also jinn that look like a combination of a human and of an animal. And these animal-like jinn are called hin in the Arabic and Islamic traditions. And the jinn are actually not indestructible creatures or creatures that are beyond mortality as they can be killed by rather mundane means in certain traditions. And they can also have children with humans. In fact, there exist entire traditions, Islamic traditions, I might add, and Islamic laws about jinn marriage, that is say marriages to jinn. And Belqis, the queen of Shaba in Arabic tradition, is said to have been descendant from a marriage between a jinn and a human. More specifically, her father, Ili Sharha Yahdib, a Sabian king of the 8th century BC in what is modern day Yemen, and his female consort, who is said to have been a genie. So she was half genie in Arabic traditions. The origin of the word jinn is shrouded in mystery and is actually quite hard to pinpoint from where it comes from originally. Some scholars claim that the Arab jinn is a derivation from the Latin word genius or genius, plural geni or geni, a spirit of people and places in Roman religion. However, this derivation I also doubt, as the word jinn comes from a root that seems to fit a largely strongly established pattern of Semitic languages where the consonants G and N has to do with the hidden world in several other Semitic languages which makes it unlikely to be a singular borrowing from Latin. And the Roman genius concept is also very different from the Arabic genie, as it is a sort of incarnated spirit that goes into a place or into a human being, and are usually the result of a collective spiritual essence, rather than a singular separate actor. Though it is possible that if it was taken from Roman traditions, it was changed in the transition into Arabic folklore and then later adopted into Islam. Another possible origin is that it has to do with Aramaic, which is another Semitic language close to Arabic, and the concept of Geneia, which was a type of lesser spirit or deity or guardian spirit, which kind of had a similar rule to the jinn, and thus is a much more likely origin, or the word jinn in Arabic have a shared origin with this creature, going back even further in time as a very ancient Semitic tradition. And this is what I believe. Yet, there are other indications that point towards a Persian origin of the world, in the form of the Jaini in the Avesta tradition of Zoroastrianism. And the Jaini was a wicked spirit of impure fire, and is actually also a word that shares an origin, together with the Latin word genius, both words having a common origin in an older Indo-European word from an older Indo-European language from which both Persian and Latin descend. And Jaini were possibly among the various creatures in the pre-Zoroastrian religion of the Iranic Persian peoples. And you do have a fire association with these creatures too. And it should be known that Persian culture did influence Arabic culture. And Arabic does have a lot of loanwords from Persian 
as the Sassanid Empire before the rise of Islam was very influential on the Arabic Peninsula. And thus these Persian Jaini could have been seen as lesser deities or spirits that were worshipped in priests and religion and then turned into the jinn. Or they could have been the Aramaic Gineya, these lesser spirits. Or they could have been both and merged into one and the same. The true origin of these traditions and ideas about the jinn are very hard to pinpoint and very contested. And this was my short introduction about the jinn, such as me! And see you later for future videos about culture, history and more about the jinn. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities. Stärkobel kan att ni följa.